And I, I cannot wait to go there because that became a huge headline. A huge thing. What's poppin' y'all? It's Chris Witherspoon. I am so excited to have the pop viewers here, have y'all here and uh, taking part in this interview that we're doing. It is Women's History Month, it is March, and I can't think of a movie or a, t a TV show that speaks to the resilience of women, of Black women, and the power that women have more than the color purple. Now, it came out back in 1985, and when it's on TV, you cannot look away. Right now, it's streaming on HBO Max, and there's one person in the movie that I connected with years ago who I think is one of the most phenomenal stars and just a phenomenal force in Hollywood. Her name is Desrita Jackson. You all know her as Young Seely from The Color Purple. Desrita, thank you for being here right now with us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Chris. You know how much I love you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I enjoyed it. We're going to have to try to keep it on the subject because we can go all over. We keep I'm talking. Telling you, I'm telling you, we really can. We really can. But listen, we're going to play a game really quick um, as oh. a icebreaker. I want to have fun. I want to enjoy this moment with you. And and I think there are so many fans of The Color Purple that literally have scenes from The Color Purple Memorized. And I want to hear the backstory. So I'm going to play you a scene. I'm going to, I'm going to play you three of the top scenes, in my opinion, that you are a part of from that movie. Just 30 seconds, because we got to worry about rights and clearances. And <laughs> okay. I want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind as a memory, something that maybe stands out from that scene that we might not know as viewers. Because again, people had this stuff memorized. All right? OK. <laughs> OK, let's do this. <laughs> What was going on? You're on the bed giving birth as a character. What was going on in your mind? First of all, that scene was the first day taping for everyone on the cast of The Color Purple. <laughs> we taped that at Universal. For, talk about, first of all, you have to understand, my that was, Color Purple was my first thing in anything. I never did a commercial. I never did a, um, a one-liner, nothing in Hollywood. And I never had a kid. So when we did that scene, it was the first day of Warner Brothers. Everybody was a geek that was excited. Spielberg was just about to have his baby. We did that take like maybe a few times. It, it was just so great. I mean, it just, it was perfect. It was amazing. And then Spielberg got a call that his wife is in labor. And we rapped and he was so excited. He was like, oh my God, we just did a delivery scene. Was that a real baby that you were holding? No. You know what's really funny? I've seen them now have these babies that they use for, say, mothers who've lost a lot of children or they have emotional ties and they're really, they're made with fiber or something that's so real, the way they move. That was back then. We literally, that baby looked so real. It looked so real. The only thing for me, though, was it was too dark. Okay. I was like, let me tell y'all something. Black people, like, babies don't come out really Ooh. black. You better preach. That's facts. That's facts. They don't come they out like that. A lot you know? lighter, then they get their color as it goes along. That's right. That uh, was the only thing, <laughs> you know? Um, and even back then, I kind of was like, hmm, it's really dark. But it was scary because they looked it so real. Oh, God. I'm 14 years old. I've always been a good girl. Maybe you can give me a sign. Let me know what's happening to me. One day, my daddy come and say, you're going to do what your mama wouldn't. Now, I got two children by my daddy. Give me the lowdown. What was going on? Well, what's interesting was the preparation for me for that role. Um, there was a lot of me reading separately and then um, internalizing on the actual screen. So you wouldn't think there was so much prep work to that, but I literally just embodied the thought, the concept. I went through this thought process 
in my head, even doing the scene, I was so intense, you know, that I know I wasn't supposed to speak, but you saw that part. Yes. Of you mouth the words, you mouth the yeah. words a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. And they used it. They used it though. Well, they, yeah, it's so funny. Like, we did it, but Spielberg actually made the suggestion to don't lose that. You, he, he reminded me, he said it, mouth, you know, and during the filming, when I said it was real, it was very real for me. I understood the internal quietness. Honestly, it shines through. Now, this these next two scenes are like my favorite and the scene that tears me apart the most. So I'm gonna play the first scene for you um, right now. <laughs> All right, what was going on in that scene? Well, in, okay, with that one, what was interesting about that one was um, we really didn't see each other for a while. Um, so I would shoot the, I would shoot pro parts of the project and then there would be a break in between. And she was close to me on the set, she really was. So when I said, I literally, when that whole thing happened, it was like, it was like, <laughs> you know, you embody it. like. And I was the only kid on the set. So there were only a few adults that were really warm to me and they meant, a lot. I mean, it was, it was that kind of thing. We take that in North Carolina on a plantation. Whew. It was on a real plantation. That was a, um, a real plantation house. I believe that's Rita Jackson. If this movie came out in 2021, you'd be getting an Oscar nomination. Because this next scene, to me, for an actress who has never acted before, it is so powerful. And it, it means there's so many scenes that you do in this film that are so powerful. But when you think about one scene that deserves an Oscar nomination, or if you're looking at that one scene as a critic, this is the one that is, to this day, a masterpiece. <laughs> Says Rita, listen, when I see that scene, when I see that scene, I'm speechless and moved to tears all these years later. I am too. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot going on there. Um, we did that scene, I can't even tell you how many, countless of times. So each time, it, had to, it drained. I, I mean, you put 100 in every single moment. We did that take so many times. Not only that, you know, there's a part that when he's pulling your feet, me, I'm holding her face. I'm holding her feet. I mean, I'm holding her feet and he's pulling down the stairs, right? Yes. And they will put pads on. They try their best, but the, each bump, the pad would just like move out the way. <laughs> each, no matter how much they padded me, the pads just couldn't take the we was working that scene all in one day yes we did it all in one day full day I don't even know how many times because of so many different angles and the, the the emotions that came out of it was extraordinary like every time there was not one time that you we we taked it and and anybody was like fake or or trying not we gave it after I did that scene I slept for two days I think I mean, the tears, the real tears you were able to muster, it, it, it drains me now to see a little girl, which you're, you know, you, you're a little girl playing a young girl. It drains me now to see the work that you put into that role because it feels so real. And I think that's what I like about 
you in particular is that you set, you're the foundation for the film. You set the tone for the, the role that Whoopi, you know, goes on to win an Oscar for. You set the tone for Oprah and, and Harpo. Like you, you are the foundation for the movie. And it's, it's surreal when people recognize it's the first time you were acting. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Spielberg literally went on this nationwide hunt, I was told, for that character. Um, so they made, I mean, I didn't even, you know, I mean, of course it's a leading role, it was a starring role, but I never really had the understanding of the impact of how important it is for the opening of a film. Absolutely. Um, that did do basically what you said, but thank you. The foundation, no, seriously. Listen, I want to take a break for a second from me asking you questions. And I want to bring in one of our pop viewers, users, who um, left a reaction, but who has a question for you, literally, about um, your role in The Color Purple and about your craft as an actress. Hi, this is so cool. Um, uh, my name's Ryan. I'm a huge fan. And um, I have so many questions I could ask, but what I really wanted to know was what what sort of process was built in for you and Whoopi to sort of, um, you know, coexist within the same character? And was the film shot in sequence? And therefore, did that inform it at all? Or was it shot out of sequence? And bonus question, I know you were also in Sister Act. Um, what was the relationship that formed with you and Whoopi that led to you obviously working with her again? Okay, Ryan gave you three questions in one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, three questions in one. Come on, Ryan, with all the questions. I was answer. trying to keep up. I was like, yeah, okay. You can answer any of them in whatever order you want to go in, and I'll help you. But um, yeah, we'll start off with like, you know, was the film shot in sequence? And what was your process? Like he said, what was your process sort of connecting to Whoopi and, 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 and passing off the role to her? Well, I don't know if, if it was shot in sequence. But I do know that um, most of all of my scenes was shot first. So I'm not sure if they was, but I, and I did know for a fact that I was told that Whoopi was told to also go and review. You know, um, we didn't really see each other much. But then you ended up working with her in the Sister Act. How that, I mean, on Sister Act, how'd that happen? Um, I don't know, I was just cast. <laughs> Because when we saw each other on set, it was just like, ah, and the hug, and the, I mean, I'm so, sister act, so let me tell you. Give me the tea, give me the tea, okay? Yeah, I need the tea. So, on sister act, we literally came to set almost every day. Something was wrong. There was always a problem. We spent, the, the whole time was out there, never. I mean, we shot like one or two scenes. And I think to this day, everybody always sees it. And they're like, why they got close up on these extras? <laughs> <laughs> right? So we was cast as um, the concept was, what you see in Sister Act 2 with the um, with having kids and the, yeah, there were some problem kids and all that. Mm -hmm. Originally, that turned to that because they couldn't get our storyline out. Oh, wow. They couldn't bring, I remember being told, we can't really bring you back because these are now children from, I guess, a, a whole nother era. You know, it was like, you guys are the straight kids. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, it was the most highest paid glorified extra <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes that happens, you know, but oh my God, I mean, I build new friendships. Um, to this day, um, in the film, my, my, one of my dearest friends, the teller and I, we always say sister act for life, yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I don't know, but Whoopi had, she did, I don't think she knew. I don't know. Cause Whoopi knows a lot. You know what I'm saying? All I know, Whoopi was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You know, but yes, and I've always told her one of my biggest things is I wish that we was we was able to spend more time and have um I wish she you know could have been like my personal mentor too. I mean, 
I loved her. Mm-hmm. I went to, I'm going to wrap this up. See, I talk a lot. <laughs> I love it. I, um, I was in New York getting an award. It was the prestige award. And I remember contacting Whoopi and she was like, stop by. I want you to come by. And I was like, and then me, I was just like, okay, I'm only here for a couple of days. But then the award kept going and kept having me to do this. And then I was like, had to call and be like, I can't come, <laughs> you know? So it's just one of those things. We know she, she I just got cast. Um, now, listen, I was doing some research and I learned some things that I just didn't know about the goings on during the color purple, but also after. And one of them was, you know, that you forged this, this bond with Oprah. You know, I knew Oprah was, you know, very involved behind the scenes of the movie. And she was there on days she wasn't filming. This was like her baby. But I didn't know that after you wrapped filming The Color Purple, that Oprah flew you out to Chicago and on several occasions. Like, tell me about that. Oh, my God. Um, I always wanted to to let her know, now that I'm an adult, how impactful it was. She literally would, you know, tell me you need to, you know, she'll have, she'll have a whole setup and she'll have all these kids come together that was around my age. And she was like, talk to them. And I would, we had a pajama party or she'll have all these things and I would talk to them. And that kind of stirred that type of, um, what I do now, who I am. I'll tell you a, a story about that I never share with anybody. And Oprah, I don't know if she remembers this because she's probably like, this is my life. This is what I do. But it was impactful for me. We was at her, um, at her home in Chicago. She was on the bed and she was having a business meeting. And I was laying at the foot of the bed, kind of like just dangling. I think I was watching TV or something. But I was listening to her and this business meeting. And I learned that she signs all her checks. You know? Listen, when I watch The Color Purple now and I see your character, you know, as a, as a father, as a grown man, I see a beautiful young Black girl who's so talented, who's a young teenage girl, who's playing a, a teenage girl, but who's so talented. But I, I think about young Seely and how she's depicted in the movie and Mm -hmm. the the name she's called, how she's described as being the opposite of beautiful, the opposite of of strong and gorgeous. Did that take a toll on you as a young girl when you, you know, when you walked away from filming that after stepping so deeply into that character? No. Wow. That's not what took a toll. What took a toll was real life um, drama. Like for instance, right after that movie, I got I was raped. And to this day, my mind it was by a fan because there was too many inkling things. Um, it was date rape back at that time, they didn't have that term. Mm. So it was kind of like, how do you know this person and you was on a date or with them or so um it were it, it still, was right you were raped were you still a teenager yes it was about just about two years or a year and a half after the movie released and um it was very kind of like impactful because at the time coming back trying to go to auditions now i that's when it's kind of like i had this fragile um e- this this thing like I couldn't get past the rape and the rape led to a pregnancy and my mother was very much like well it's your fault in a way because <clears throat> you know I mean you knew the person but it was going back into the industry trying to find myself through this trauma and then hearing things or being told that um, you're too dark or you you no, this is not. Um, I needed to heal. I needed to walk away from that at the time. 
I needed, you know, I started to know that's when I noticed, you know, like th those comments might have took more of effect when they were like, oh, you know, she ugly or, you know, or, you know, like the comments from the, you know, making comments about the movie or referring to my beauty or referring to my worth. That is when it became um, overwhelming or going to casting and or in Hollywood being in situations that you didn't have an adult to kind of like fight for you or make sure you're okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is, the, it was then when things kind of got like, okay, I need to kind of pull back and heal. I've got to find who I am. What's going on with me? Why am I just in this mode of survival? Well, I mean, thank you, one, for saying and for sharing that, that you were raped, because that is, it's powerful. It happens. There are so many young, beautiful young girls that are, that are victims of rape and that don't feel the power to speak about it. And what's interesting is when I watched The Color Purple back when I was a kid, that was the first time I saw a rape scene. You know, when, when Mista is on top of young Seely you know, and she's underage, you know, but it's fun. It's, it's, it's mind boggling to know that you actually endured that after the movie wrapped that you were raped. You know, it's, 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 what do they call that? Art imitating life or life imitating art. Unbelievable. Well, I don't, had to go I don't think so. Well, I won't say that part because it was a completely different kind of um, situation. situation. Gotcha. It, it was a violent, um, it was totally different. Okay. Um, and that goes back to, I think, what we would say when you say, why was it so powerful, though? There were so many of us, young women and young men, that were being mistreated, abused, and we had to accept it. Mm it didn't know that we was accepting it. And even if we did know, how do we get out of it? How do we, how do you stop, you know, when the abuser is somebody that you, that you have to, you depend on you, you're for life, for food, for, you know? So I think in real life from the color purple, there were so many people like what you said, it was the first time I saw that. Mm. And some people was like, yeah, I've never, that happens to me. That's happened to me. That's what I'm going through right now. Um, and I've never shared it. Wow. I never even knew other people was going through it. Well, I think it's, it's beautiful that you're sharing it. And I hope that, you know, you can be somebody who becomes uh, an advocate for others that went through that because it happened on screen. We saw that character and the trauma that that young girl went through in the color purple, but to know that, you know, you went through a, a situation as a young teen, uh, equally as traumatic, if not yeah. more, is, is, is powerful. So thank you for sharing that. And I want to touch on something that you and I discussed years ago, and I think that it was a conversation that wasn't something people were talking about, but needed to be discussed, and it was around colorism. You talked to me about being a dark skin girl, a dark skin woman in Hollywood and going to auditions, walking into castings and being told that you were too dark to play certain roles. And it made you take a break and leave Hollywood. Um, yeah. How does it feel and to not because, Yeah, not, and not because um, that I felt like I couldn't handle it or, or take rejection. Um, like I said, it was just because I think a lot of ch child actors need to learn when they need to take a break from the industry, um, especially because you're a child, you're developing and you're being influenced. We don't realize how much what is being said, what we're watching, what we're doing is feeding us on a subconscious level and programming us to become who we are. And for me, when I kept hearing negative things over and over and over, so I'm hearing it in the industry and then I'm hearing it at home. 
I can't leave home, but I could leave that alone for a minute. So I pulled back and then I started to, I figured it out. I just started doing what I started being around positive things, positive, anything that told me I had worth value. That's where my attention went and I did it. And I, to this day, think who I am now and how I'm able to come back into the industry, how I'm able to, you know, um, you know, run my company, all the things I'm able to do has a lot to do with the fact that I have a sound mind and, a, and I'm very c- conscious of who I am. So I, yes, color, when you hear that, and a lot of actors won't admit to it, they hear it all the time. They don't get roles for it. They don't even get paid. The same. That's how important to other people, the color is of your skin. And if you're constantly heard on a negative indentation about it, then you start to perceive it negatively. Versus me, when I left Hollywood at the time, I kept hearing positive things about it. I was part of a um, of a martial arts league that was literally was the Black Karate Federation. It was, I was being told that I am, you know how powerful you are? Wow. Wow. My my complexion was constantly being praised. I I just kind of like started really, I felt so I love me. Wow. So I think it's very important that we understand the difference. And we can't change society or how other people um feel about it or, or, or think about it, but we can change how we feel and think about it. Well, how does it feel for you to see Hollywood now beginning to embrace um, Black content, content from women, uh, and beginning to embrace dark-skinned women as beautiful? <laughs> Why you think I'm back? Yes, because oh. <laughs> you look amazing, by the way. You look amazing. Oh, so Black you. don't crack. Black don't crack. Um, <laughs> Yes, that's why I'm back. I mean, I went to film school purposely when I left because I knew what my goal was. I knew I wanted to, it was so important for me to put the image and to put good content out. And if I was going to do this and I've been writing and, um, and even producing things, you know? So now that I see the industry in this whole, like, I'm like, Oh, baby. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got a couple of treatments and a couple of scripts. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I mean, um, you're making a comeback as an actress and I can't give too much away, but what can you tell us and tell the pop viewers and folks that are watching about, you know, how the next year or how this year um, you want to get back in the industry? Okay. So <clears throat> without telling too much, right. Um, well, one, I want to come back to you and be on somebody's set. <laughs> I want to be back on someone's set, but not just, I mean, there are some major iconic movements and um, some really iconic franchises that I've already um, been invited to audition for, um, for real current and leads. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I'm so honored. I was like, I will work for a dollar fifty. Like, <laughs> you don't even got to do nothing, <laughs> right? So, um, I I want to see that happen. Also, my company, Desicon Pictures. Um, I have a production company, and we are um, we we have a couple of treatments and scripts put together, and where I will be starring. Yeah. And, yeah, so I'm excited with the opportunity. Um, we are just at the cusp of certain things. So I'm looking to be able to pitch them to some of the networks that have invited me and see um, how this goes, what, how to do, because I haven't really done any of that before, but I'm excited. I'm the, you know, I was just excited just to bring the content back, just to bring it in the industry and to be able to shoot it and make it. So um we're working I'm working on that and I'm excited I mean it's still that scene where for the color purple in particular 
when you pass off to Whoopi and you're in that little rocking chair, it still gets me. It's one of the most beautifully shot scenes and the way that you two, the way you, the way she grows into you or yeah, right? Or she grows from you is so beautiful. You would think y'all spent so much time connecting and to know that you didn't really spend a lot of time on the set even speaks more greatly to how powerful both of yeah. you are. I actually wish they didn't do such a good job on that transition. <laughs> No, for years, they will refer, they will show my scene, then refer to Whoopi Goldberg, or they will write a piece and, and show me and then refer to Whoopi Goldberg. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't even get, wait, let me tell you, I'm gonna get one more tea and then I'm gonna call it. Yeah. I didn't even get invited to the Oscars. Oh my God. The film was on 13. When I saw the other actors were sharing that, who were stars of a film, I was like, oh, they've been doing that. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't even, I mean, and for years, I even went out to auditions and they were reading. It was like, wait a minute. I thought Whoopi played that. And it was like, what character? Young, the young. And I'd be like, this is fresh. I'd be like, yeah, that was me that whole hour. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> incredible. No, that's incredible. And, and again, as I said earlier, if this movie came out in 2021, you would be the breakout star because Hollywood now loves to, I think, point to young, fresh talent who's never done anything before, but that who has the chops that you brought to that movie and who can stand among giants and be directed by the likes of Steven Spielberg and not pass out. You know what I mean? The scenes that you, even the scene of you when you're in that little um, grocery store or that little um, five and dime, and you yeah. see the baby Olivia, like that, that's a master class in acting and you never had acted before. Like those <laughs> moments, you would be nominated, everybody would be clamoring to dress you, all of it. But it's gonna it's gonna happen again. It's gonna happen again. Cause you still, you still have us, I think, enamored by that role. And you wanna see what you do next. So okay. uh, but I do wanna say for those that don't know, you have a skin, a hair a beauty line called Black Silk Products. You are a founder and a CEO of a beauty line. Can you tell folks about Black Silk Products? Well, Black Silk Products started because I I literally, uh, before the color purple and even after the color purple, I was doing braids. I did hair for 30 years as a living. And um, I would... This is, you know, you're talking about early 2000 and, you know, late 90s. I was making my products. Um, I was very much into hair. I was very much into um, herbalistic things and coming from the islands. And I understood. Pause for a second. When you were when you were doing folks hair, did they know that you were Desrita Jackson from the color purple? Seely was doing hair. No. You never told them? No, no. They didn't even know. You know who? I, Oprah outed me. What do you mean? They called me for the reunion. And I came out. I had just had a baby. And I was like, oh, I wasn't in the industry. And I was like, okay. So imagine what it was like going back home. They was like. Everybody recognized you now as an adult. And you do doing hair. So that's how my products really started. I wanted to. Um, I have my daughter. I had a, a little girl. Ironically, she was chocolate and I wanted her here to stand out because I knew how important that was. So I started making products just literally for her hair. I started making, she had um, eczema. i made product oils for her skin. It was successful. I continued making it. And to this day, um, that's what I do. We actually bought a farm. I So when you buy our products, they're coming you're getting essential oils that we actually grew, mm. press. And if you read the comments on our line, people are like, why is this healing me? Why is it doing this to? It's because it's fresh. Wow. Cool. Made to order. Yes. I'm like, you know, thank you. A lot of it's so funny. A lot of people don't allow me to talk much about it. And I'm just like, yeah, like. I'm talking about seriously. I can't even get commercial ads sometimes. I don't know if it's I'm always looking for a skin upgrade. So, you know, I'm going to get all them products because- I got to get you something. I'm always I got to get you something. I got to get you something, okay? How folks get the products? Go to my 
blacksilk.com. Okay. Okay. And if you don't know how to find that, find my fan page, find Desiree Jackson. And I have a link to everything. I'm going to like it. <laughs> He's yeah. like, I have, <laughs> so you'll find it. Well, listen, you know, here at Pop Viewers, we are all about a good surprise. And, you know, we're about building community around content. And there are so many folks that have been watching The Color Purple on HBO Max, but also that have seen it down through the years. So we want to surprise you right now with some reactions from the pop viewers who have watched your work in this movie and who have watched the movie and loved it. So enjoy. Listen, you are playing yourself right now if you haven't watched The Color Purple. You are missing out on life. What are you even doing? If you're watching this and haven't seen The Color Purple, stop looking at me and go see this masterpiece. When I sent you, I knew there was a God. One. I hadn't seen the movie and I am very emotional because it's really, really spectacular. All my life I had to fight. That's two. All I gotta say is the nostalgia. I remember watching this movie as a kid. I didn't understand what was going on at all, but rewatching it again and again and again as an adult, uh, extremely nostalgic. Hoppo, who this woman? Three. You told Harpo to beat me. That's four. It is such an incredible movie. I mean, if you haven't seen this, you need to go watch it now. <laughs> you show is ugly. Five. When I watched it, I was like, wow, very nostalgic moment. I was taken back to many childhood memories I had watching with my mom and everything. And of course, till you do right by me, everything you think of. Chutch, color purple, baby. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're so, <laughs> I love when you do that. <laughs> Desiree, listen, you're so welcome. And what is it, you know, 30, 30 plus years later, how does it feel to see this movie have the impact that it still has? And why do you think that is? First of all, it is amazing because as an an actor, a thespian. You literally, you love what you do, but we're all waiting for that role that impacts the world or impact, you know, we wait for that legacy role. Mm. And you want that. I don't care if you've done a hundred films or a hundred, if you haven't have a role yet, that is that legacy role that impacts people then what have you done as an actor yet? Mm. So to come out the gate and, and to have that and to have those great people as friends, those memories, um, it, changed, it changed my world physically at that time. And to this day, you know, to this day. People are ready to see more from you and your work, the work that you did decades ago has folks captured. And when I told people I was talking to today, like a bunch of my people that like in my circle, they were like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Like, I, want, I want to know more about her. And I think that when you, to your point, when you have the opportunity to have a role, like the role you got so young in your career, you're endeared to us. You're endeared to people for giving us that. And we want to always celebrate you and follow what you're working on and what you're doing. So just know whatever you do next, you are gonna have people showing up to support you. And listen, you guys, she also, Desrita also has a book. It is called The Black Hair Conspiracy. You can pick it up, get it, order it on her website or also online. And it's been added to a special collection on black hair at the Blair Caldwell Reference Library Museum, which is part of the renowned Smithsonian Museum. So that's Rita, you're doing incredible work behind the scenes as a CEO entrepreneur, and we are ready for you to come back on the scene. So thank you, the pop viewers, thank you. And we look forward to interviewing you again for your next big undercover, we can't right. talk about the role that's gonna be happening. <laughs> Oh, thank you for having me, Chris. And congratulations to you. You're amazing. All right. Amazing. Thank you, Desirita. We love you. Thank you.